there, you're watching Talking Europe on France 24. Today we're tackling the issues of social media, free speech and just who is really in control of our democracies. The recent removal of Donald Trump from basically every social media platform has sparked debate about who decides who else gets to have free speech. Now, even Twitter's own CEO, Jack Dorsey, said he thought the former US president's ban <coughs> from the site sets a precedent I feel is dangerous, the power uh, an individual or corporation has over a part of the global public conversation. Now, the European Union has some ideas up its sleeve with new proposals on regulating the digital space unveiled in December 2020. With me to discuss Trump's Twitter ban and what comes next are two members of the European Parliament. We have uh, on my left uh, French MEP Fabienne Keller from the Renew Europe Group. Hi there. Hello. And uh, to my right, we have Marketa Gregorova, Czech MEP from the uh, Czech Pirate Party, uh, which sits with the Greens group here at the European Parliament. Exactly. Hello. Hi. Thanks for being with us. So, um, yeah, first basic question. How do we feel about do banning Donald Trump from Twitter, especially, of course, this came in the light of uh, his uh, calls to his supporters to march on the Capitol, which was then followed by the insurrection. I'll come to you first. All right. Uh, well, of course, uh, the important part is uh, to first kind of... Uh, uh, demolish the uh, thing that uh, Trump is saying that uh, his freedom of speech has been in any way uh, meddled with. That is, of course, not correct because uh, freedom of speech uh, is constitutionalized towards the state, the authorities. These are private businesses. Therefore, the question we have to ask is whether these private businesses can really do whatever they want because being private doesn't mean you can do whatever you want to do with your, uh, with your business, right? Mm -hmm. You, for example, can't have child trafficking business, naturally. And that is uh, also the point that I think we need to ask here, whether first these companies don't have such a huge monopoly over the digital market that they can do whatever they want to anyone they want. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether, of course, uh, they are behaving and they are somehow following uh, the laws that we have in the so-called offline space. Mm -hmm. Because online and offline, shouldn't be so different, in my opinion. Fabienne Keller. Uh, we see uh, day after day the huge power of those uh, social networks and the digital services. Um, the, the speech, the, the words Donald Trump used, um, encouraging people to uh, go to the capital and destroy democracy, uh, is unacceptable in our of European values where we respect mm -hmm. uh, elected people and their decision and, and the vote. So we, we share somehow the decision that was taken by Twitter, but as you said, it's hard for us to accept that it's a private decision because Twitter is a private company mm -hmm. as all the GAFAs. Uh, so this is why actually young, mm -hmm. long ago, uh, the decision in Europe has taken place and now we are on the way to take some decisions on regulating mm -hmm. uh, this uh, digital uh, market and the services. Mm -hmm. And we already have decided on the terrorist contents, which are the most dangerous, after the events uh, in the last past years in different cities in Europe. Well, exactly, and this is uh, where the conversation moves on to next, I think, what happens next. Uh, everybody, it seems, has given their opinion, from Angela Merkel to Alexei Navalny. Uh, we even had Thierry Breton, the French European Commissioner, saying he thinks this is a 9-11 moment for social media. Bruno Le Maire, the French uh, Finance Minister, said, uh, talks about the digital oligarchy. So there's a lot of agreement that something needs to happen. Marketa Gregorova, you, you spoke about uh, dealing with the, how much power these uh, private companies have in the market. And so we're mm -hmm. talking about very few companies, really, aren't we? These are enormous companies that, that really have monopolies. Do you support moves to break up these effective monopolies? Well, of course, uh, and uh, it's not just about monopoly on one market, it's multinational. And for example, if, uh, I don't know, Czech anti-monopoly office would try to do something about Facebook, mm -hmm. it's, it would be a laughable matter for them. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, 
this uh, and this responsibility needs to change. Of course, I'm not saying that the providers should be responsible for the content, uh -huh. but also uh, always the, the creator of the content should be responsible for it. Mm. But also there should be some fair and transparent rules for how we uh, deal with this and especially for how these monopolies or companies are dealing with that. Because to be honest, uh, I don't think they are applying their, their terms of uh, services uh, very equally. Uh, if they did, I actually don't think that many people would use them. So maybe if they start, uh, they, that will be just for the better for the internet because people will start to use uh, other more open source and non-proprietary services. But the question is, uh, who's checking up on whether these companies are applying the terms of their own services? And currently... <laughs> no one, because there is no regulation and the right scale should be worldwide. Mm -hmm. We are in Europe, we are already a large market. So this is why the Commission proposed uh, uh, regulation on the mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. and another regulation on the question of monopoly and uh, competition, which is very important because we have a very low number of small companies mm. because when they grow, they get controlled by the big five mm. because there is a scale efficiency. The bigger you are, the more mm -hmm. uh, advertising you can mm -hmm. get and the more information you can um, mm -hmm. put together which is what is expected by your clients. So it's interesting. Uh, it sounds like you support broadly the European Commission's Digital Services and Digital Markets, Markets. Act and its aim, just to tell our viewers, uh, Thierry Breton said that both these acts are based on a simple premise that what is illegal offline is also illegal online, which is what you yourself yeah. said. Um, just going back to you though, Fabienne Keller, you talked about the, the number of companies. Uh, we had Google's Vice President of Government Affairs and Public Policy, who sort of kicked back against the Digital Markets Act, saying, uh, we're concerned they appear to specifically target a handful of companies and make it harder to develop new products to support small businesses in Europe. What do you make of that argument? <laughs> Um, We're laughing. The, the, discussion, <laughs> the discussion is open. <laughs> they are very well organized in public affairs. They are very good, very good lobbyists. They have very good tools too. They are doing some wonderful things. But, but I, you think it's nonsense? But <laughs> is what I'm hearing. <laughs> I not think words into we your mouth. need smaller companies and other actors. This is how the private sector mm. is uh, more pushed to services that are useful for, for people. Mm. And actually there are small mm. companies appearing, but usually at some point of their growth, they are taken control of by one of the biggest. So we have to organize better the competition, mm. given uh, the reality today and the mm. power they have already uh, uh, gained. Maketa Gregorova, <laughs> you're laughing at that comment from the Google uh, exec. Yeah, it's, it's cute uh, that the monopoly is talking about helping smaller businesses. <laughs> but do you think that the European Commission's proposals in the Digital Services Act, Digital Markets Act, um, will that achieve uh, what you would like to see happen? Uh, well, I uh, certainly hope so, but of course it will be up to discussions. Uh, it's nowhere near finished, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, I, uh, for once, I think that uh, we need more transparency uh, in these types of issues. Of course, breaking up the monopolies would be amazing, but uh, there is still a uh, long way to go. Mm -hmm. And also I think that uh, we need to realize that uh, we, the users of the social media and the services, are actually not... Uh, uh, their customers, their customers are advertisers. We are just products for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think that this is a model that can last mm -hmm. if we uh, want to keep uh, uh, keep the internet uh, to some extent free and of mm -hmm. course uh, free of uh, unwanted regulation, let's say. So I, um, I would really uh, say that the uh, Google and of course other companies uh, uh, should get prepared for some kind of regulation like that mm -hmm. because no, if they have monopolies over that and uh, they are not serving more products to us. They are serving more products to get more money from advertisers. Just like to bring in, in the couple of minutes we have left, uh, the issue of freedom of speech, uh, of course, which we, we touched on at the beginning. Um, what do we make of the argument that more regulation in the internet, in the online space, is likely to hamper freedom of speech? Well, the question is to find the right balance because freedom of speech 
helps people that have um, hate speeches or terrorist uh, contents to spread their messages very easily. So we have to control this. But freedom of expression is our, one of our uh, value of reference in Europe. So how do we handle mm. our will not to have, for example, kids looking at things they should never, um, but at the same time, when you, we ask the platforms to take, for example, the terrorist content, where mm -hmm. we are on the point of, to take a decision for that, and that's urgent, uh, to have a counterpower checking that you know, it's mm. done in the right way. Mm -mm. There are not excesses in the application, mm. and because uh, the state cannot do everything, the platform has to do part of it. Yeah. So, how do we counterbalance this yeah. to make sure freedom of expression is protected as well? Well, I think that as a point of reference, we can actually use what we discussed previously about the offline and online world. Uh, as uh, Fabian mentioned, uh, the terroristic content, for example, it's both in offline and online world, illegal, of course. And we have uh, plenty of examples like that in the offline world. Uh, for instance, if someone is uh, inciting violence, mm. or, uh, which pretty much happened uh, with Trump, right? Mm. So that is, of course, problematic. But also, uh, I, uh, I would say that for us or for me uh, to preserve the internet as free as possible from this kind of uh, regulation of uh, who can speak where is uh, is uh, essential. Mm -hmm. I might uh, bring uh, you know the parlor uh, into the debate as a, as a controversial topic. Mm -hmm. uh, let's make it more fun. <laughs> uh, but uh, to be honest, I think they are completely. Uh, it's completely legitimate for them to exist, and it was completely illegitimate from Amazon or Google. I don't know. Uh, to ban their services uh, because that just shows the monopoly. They can say uh, uh, whoever will be on the market. I don't think that's, uh, that's how it should be. All right, unfortunately, we will have to leave it there, but I'd like to thank you both very much for taking part in this debate, which I'm sure will continue on for much time to come. Thanks to you as well for watching. See you soon.